The metaphor is somewhat worn out, but it remains nonetheless valid. Ancient Iraq or Mesopotamia is one of the cradles of civilization. Sites in the Iraqi south, such as Uruk and Ur, were the first cities in human history and the birthplace of writing. And in northern Iraq, sites, at sites such as Nimrud and Nineveh, archaeologists uncovered the capitals of what was probably the first empire in world history, Assyria, with palaces and temples that have produced some of the most spectacular works of art from antiquity. Uh, some of the pieces, as you all know, housed here in London, not in this house here, but in the British Museum. Uh, and Nineveh has also produced uh, the first universal library in human history. The Iraqi sites, as we have heard in the previous communication by Dr. Curtis, have actually been pretty well protected and were rather safe in the years between the 1920s and 1980 or 1990. Since then, however, due to war and political chaos, they have suffered quite extensively um, and have seen a lot of uh, illicit digging, uh, especially after the US-led invasion in 2003. Much of this illicit digging, uh, however, was concentrated in the south of Iraq, such as at the site of Umar, which you can see here, whereas the north, uh, the region around Mosul, was in fact mostly affected uh, not so much by deliberate uh, destruction or digging, but simply by neglect. You see here on this uh, slide from 2001, Sennacherib's palace at Nineveh with the tin roof that protected it actually removed, exposing sculpture like that uh, to the weather. But in recent years, the situation had actually improved, um, enabling members of the University of Mosul to engage in new excavations at Nineveh, such as the ones documented on that slide here, which were undertaken between 2010 and 2012. Now, as we've heard before, uh, on June 10, 2014, the Islamic State, or ISIS, uh, invaded the city, took the city of Mosul, uh, and brought all these hopeful developments to an abrupt stop. Um, it immediately uh, closed down the Mosul Museum, turning it into uh, an administrative center to administer the zakat tax. It closed down most university departments, forcing academics to flee the city and to reassemble in Erbil, and especially in Dohuk, where it kind of Azatz University was created. It also engaged in humanitarian acts that are deplorable, and I won't talk about them, but obviously they are a major concern as well. And they started uh, a campaign of cultural cleansing that was initially directed mostly against Islamic and to lesser degree Christian sites, such as and this kind of a, there was a key moment on, on July 24, 2014, uh, the uh, explosion of the uh, mosque of the prophet Jonah or Yunus uh, at the site of Nineveh, which was actually not a Shiite site, it was actually, this is a Sunni site, which shows the degree of radicalism that uh, the organization displays. Um, a video released on February 25th, 2015, has now shown us, um, was the first one to show us that the destructive activities were not just geared against Islamic uh, Christian, but also against pre-Islamic um, sites. Um, the video showed destructions in two areas, the Nergal Gate area uh, at Nineveh in the um, north of the city where a winged bull um, was attacked with, with a drill and several other bulls. I won't show you this, maybe I won't show you the video, I'll just show you a couple of stills, uh, were, were massively damaged. Um, and secondly, at the aforementioned Mosul Museum, where a number of uh, Assyrian slabs were apparently destroyed, but more importantly, statues of deities and kings from the ancient city of Hatra, a post-Assyrian site from the Roman Parthian period, uh, were destroyed, were toppled, and then essentially destroyed through the use of sledgehammers. Some uh, blog posts have, um, have claimed that these destructions happened actually already last summer, but the information that I received from a source in Mosul that actually happened briefly before the video on, in February was released. Obviously, our information on, on these acts and, and other acts is still very uh, provisional. There are no independent journalists or scholars really on the ground. We have to be careful what, what we are saying here. But the overall picture that emerges becomes increasingly clear. 
and it is quite obvious that um, in the aftermath of uh, the uh, destruction at Mosul at Nineveh, other sites were likewise attacked by ISIS. Um, they, but before I say, say that, I should just briefly mention one problem with the Mosul Museum is that we do not actually know exactly which artifacts were housed there. I show you two objects here, this Assyrian um, sculpture from the reign of Sargon II and this uh, sarcophagus uh, from one of the Assyrian queen's tombs from Nimrud that were housed once in Nimrud and it isn't entirely clear whether they were evacuated to Baghdad uh, in 2003 or were still kept in the Mosul Museum. So one problem we're facing is that we have not enough information about what was for instance in the Mosul Museum. On March 5th, um, information was released by ISIS, and not, not yet by ISIS, but, but actually by independent sources about uh, the um, dis destruction, the partly destruction of the site of Nimrud, another Assyrian capital. Um, this was not originally documented and the extent of the damage remained unclear. Um, in the aforementioned video though, released just last Saturday on April 11th, it became clear that presumably a few weeks later, <coughs> Nimrud in fact was more or less obliterated, at least the site of the palace of Ashurnazipal, which is particularly deplorable because this was in fact the only uh, Assyrian palace that was in a way visible on the ground and after apparently some slices of reliefs had been taken away by ISIS, uh, they simply detonated the site of which in fact nothing is left. Um, information from March 6th um, claimed that the site of Hatra was likewise massively damaged. Original reports were about explosions having been heard. A video released on April 4th doesn't show the dynamiting of the very remarkable temples at that site, but it does show attacks on sculpture such as this hat here um, and um, that the site's likewise uh, probably massively affected. Finally, there were also reports released on March 8th uh, about uh, destruction at Khosabar, the last, the third and last uh, great Assyrian capital from the late 8th century BCE. Uh, those reports have not yet been independently verified or are not documented in any way, so we really know what um, the situation at Khosabar is. We should think about um, the motivation behind these acts, I think they have to do it. And I think what sets uh, these activities in Assyria aside from previous uh, assaults on cultural heritage sites is that these are uh, deliberate acts widely broadcast by ISIS through propaganda videos and uh, other posts on the internet. And uh, I think we can essentially distinguish three basic audiences that ISIS wants to uh, target uh, through these actions. The first is um, sympathizers and potential sympathizers, both in the Middle East and in uh, the West, uh, to whom the organization wants to show that it faithfully reenacts uh, uh, iconoclastic acts ascribed in some traditions to uh, Abraham or Ibrahim and the Prophet Muhammad. The second audience is the people of Syria and Iraq uh, during the uh, rule of the Assads and uh, Saddam Hussein. Um, attempts were made by uh, the um, governments of these states um, to um, create an identity across uh, religion, sects, and ethnic groups by uh, emphasizing the greatness of the pre Islamic uh, civilizations. Of these. We have heard about that in uh, Margaret van Esse's uh, presentation. Um, and this kind of nation building is, of course, anathema to ISIS with its idea of a, a caliphate. So, um, this is another audience that's targeted with these videos. And finally, uh, the videos are also addressed, so to speak, to us, to the people in the West. Uh, ISIS in, deliberately wants to inflict pain uh, on, on uh, the West, in a way, which uh, has, uh, of course, always considered uh, ancient Mesopotamia as also as part of its own cultural heritage and has heavily subsidized and supported archaeological work in all these places. What will the future bring? Um, that's, of course, very hard to say. At this point, the most spectacular monuments on the ground in the Mosul region from the Assyrian period are essentially destroyed. 
Um, of course, it is possible that uh, we will see more looting, and um, as this uh, golden crown from one of the queen's tombs in Mosul shows, uh, this would be extremely uh, catastrophic if, if, if these sites were in fact uh, further looted. Uh, other sites might also be targeted. One possible target might be Ashur, but it should be said that there is no monumental art at Ashur, and so it seems um, less of a likely target and promising target uh, than some of these other places. Uh, what can be done? This will be addressed later. Let me just say a very few things, um, essentially reiterating what has been, been, been said before. Uh, obviously, as long as, as ISIS is, is, is in control of large uh, parts of northern Iraq and Syria, very little can actually be done. Uh, it's to be hoped that uh, national governments, such as the Turkish government, is encouraged to better police its borders to curb the illicit uh, exploitation of antiquities, whether that is high on the list of priorities of politicians, of course, is very much the question, and we hope so. We need to continue documenting the destruction that I think is vital, and probably most importantly, we have to somehow support our colleagues from Syria and from Iraq the best we can, because they will be the ones who will be able uh, to return one day to these places and to start the work that needs to be done uh, at some point to, um, to, to do whatever can be done. Um, I believe uh, that resolutions, public resolutions in the West will actually not have any impact and will actually be probably rather counterproductive since ISIS deliberately breaks taboos, would only motivate uh, its supporters to engage in additional acts of destruction. And finally, since I'm speaking here uh, as a scholar um, and uh, in fact as, as, as an osteologist interested in, in texts, um, I should say that as scholars we are facing, of course, a, a major dilemma with regard to the looting. Uh, which we all deplore because uh, the lost context is a catastrophe for our ability to, to reconstruct ancient history. But we also face now a volume of looting that is probably unprecedented. And I do believe that somehow these looted objects uh, need to be documented. And I think we have to somehow detach the issue of documentation from the issue of proper uh, property and, and, and ownership, however problematic in legal terms uh, that that may be. Uh, thank you very much.